David D is having an ugly clash with defense CS Adam Duane over controversial hijab statement from Waziri. In this video, I want us to look at what exactly the public perception that government officers really show when they come out to give statements that looks to show a sense of entitlement. Welcome to the Bold Analysis. My name is Kevin Odwell. If you're watching this video for the first time, I want to humbly request you to subscribe to our channel. This is our channel is the most informative political podcast. And so that's our niche. If you want to get it factual, you get it here. I want you to reflect on this speech because this 37 second clip by uh, from Duale is what is causing the heated debate in Twitter. Anywhere where the government requires... I am not from the Islamic, um, I'm not so much acquitted with the Islamic culture. And I'll be lying to you if I make an informed take on this. But I need to make it clear that if you look at what uh, David D has been consistently saying since yesterday, he's been asking civil servants, those who are in government, that uh, during this festive season, if you you can avoid the microphone, the better. Uh, the better. I want to retrieve to you. Um, yes, let's just read this to tweets a bit. Because it is intolerant and Duale is is defenseless, Akorinos and Sehus wear turbans as they please, as they please without hindrance. Trying to be a grand mufti is politics we don't need. Religious and ethnic mobilization has no place in Uda. That's where David D does not maybe understand. Because he's I want to understand maybe he is an economist, so he's not understanding the bit of what is going on here. We are trying to look at this. There is another tweet I want to share with, with you. Um, yes. This is uncalled for. He was responding to that. During this festive season, I urge my colleagues who are intoxicated by power to avoid microphones whenever possible. I don't want to, I want us to pick that. He's telling our colleagues and not responding. That means he's not, not only talking to Duane. There are many people, if you've been making political observations, you realize that there are many um, uh, government officials that have found themselves in the loose. And maybe he's passing a message. But just a bit, I just want to do a very small reminder. Just to take you to Iran, I was just trying to find out, by the way, hijab is a word that means cover. This politics of hijab has really been in Iran for quite some time. Just recently, a 22-year-old um, woman, Maha Mahsa Amini, was died in the custody of morality police. The young woman was accused of violating rules on wearing hijab in the public. And as we talk now, there have been constant, constant push by women in the Asian nation to get what they call their rights. Even though compulsory hijab has been instituted, criminalized and promoted as the main Islamic State gender policy, women's efforts to negotiate their rights have been brave and remarkable. So on whether this is done right or not i don't want to i don't want to take that direction that i said i am not an expert and i'm not uh, from the faithful any people from that may really get me wrong but i want to confine myself to this conversation or what david d is saying his message is very clear and i support him 
even as political analysts, we've been insisting that uh, we are taking the country in a wrong, we are not giving the country the good tone. It is disheartening to see senior civil servants who are really decision makers and policy makers in the country getting loose on matters tribalism. And Rigade Yeshagwa has been on this. There's many other ways to say it. People have been, we've really been speaking about what can be seen as tribalism. Um, there are also other aspects, and some have even now turned down, where people are giving orders, look here, this has to be done, that has to be done. So David D is making a point. The only challenge is the fact that there is something he seems not to understand. Are you seeing similarity between the defense or rather the politics of hometown of defending our people within Uda? Someone is depend defending his community. Someone is defending his religion. And of course, I don't know what the next person is going to defend. Yes, someone is also someone giving food taking the interest of his people <laughs> as an intervention. And uh, the reason why I appreciate David D's take is because during, from the onset, the country was sitting pretty uncomfortable, by, was a bit uncomfortable by the fact that the office of the presidency was touted as the extension of the church. And we were asking questions, so if, if you're going to take churches there, so about the other religions, but these questions have been emerging. And if you follow David in this Twitter page, you'll realize that he's consistently talking about, uh, there is another one, I think I need to read it to you. Um, I don't, I need to quote it. Um, someone challenged him about Geshagwa and D. Uh, now he say, Geshagwa and Sakaja disagree on public policy, which is in order. Stalking religious bigotry, whether Muslim or Christian, is not. I have called out Christian bigotry here many times. We don't need identity politics in this country, whether ethnic or religious. Let me tell you, William Bruto sent David D. <laughs> Clearly, he sent David D. <laughs> yes. That is what I was just saying, that people have been playing identity politics, where you want to be identified their community and some have gone to the extent of now they're not making it in public so what david Lee is saying here he's simply and you know when he was doing this tweet also the debate between sakaja and, and the gathe the fallout or rather the, the disagreement between the two had also played out in public and i think he's simply saying that look here we don't want to do that politics of ethnicity and i don't know the religiosity but the religious aspects so it's possible. What do you see right from that speech? I want to dissect that speech and say that the, we don't have a problem and the country may not have a problem by a leader defending his community. One thing I know, and I can say this in that few contradiction, contradiction, there is a delicate balance between what is touted as defending or rather standing for the culture of the religious culture of the Islamic people, but it's just political mobilization. It's just religious mobilization. Mobilization is something that is going on. Uh, if you listen to the tone of Waziri, Waziri is saying, is speaking as the spokesperson of the Islam. Okay, he gets, he deserves those rights because he's the senior most member of them, their senior most member in government, is the Waziri government. Eh? So maybe he, by, by, by the political laws, he's most likely there. It, that political mobilization aspect on, on that religious end, sadly, David is talking about it, but that's what is happening. People are, others are mobilizing alongside their tribes. Others may mobilize alongside their cultures and religions. Others also mobilize as they wish. <laughs> 
So the homeboy mentality, and we seem to be condoning the country. That, that to me is what will not look good um, for some time. Um, what exactly also doesn't sound good is telling others who have a problem to look for another country if you, an, if you have a problem. It looks sense of entitlement coming from Waziri wa Defense. Huh? <laughs> I've seen a joke in social media, someone saying, ah, sasa sisi tabidi tuweko wapo inje Tanzania, la muji ndio, because sasa Waziri wa Defense yeti langalei maneno. <laughs> you know, so it doesn't look good, uh, simple terms that um, as much as we want to, we, we are dictating something, but that last sentence, that last bit of that sentence, for me, you can just do without it. And what is the enforcement? What is the enforcement? What is, what is the enforcement criteria? Because, just trying to borrow a leaf from, um, from the Iran one, I think there was a regulation that if before, you know, before, before 1979, there was no law that was compelling. There was no hijab law that was compelling people to put on hijab. Even though they used to put to protest about the monarchical rule and, and so on and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, they're saying that between 1941 and 1979, there was no law that instructed women to wear, but many women still wore head, head cuffs, either as a statement against monarchy or because their choices were restricted by patriarchal values. This, this is where we are. And I, I, when I was reading about it, there's something that says that a judge would make a ruling or rather punish a, a hijab law breaker using the written law. And where written laws don't apply, the Islamic sources. But you know in Iran, it's, it's somehow in the constitution. That's why they're really fighting about it. David Ndi is a voice and is representing the voice of majority of Kenyans and also people within government. We got it. There is a speech that um, uh, Didi Nyoro once made in Murang and since then I think he turned down. He once said, and from then I've never heard him speaking about Uru Kenyatta. He said, Kwamba, Zinevit Tulipitia, the things we went through, they hardened us and maybe without those things we wouldn't have been where we are. So what we need to do, we need to move on and leave that talk. For me, um, there are some people that are going overboard. And it's not about Waziri Duane. We've seen this. There's some people that are going overboard and they need to be called to order. Some of them are senior most No one can even talk about it. But my, uh, what, what really I buy very positive in this is because David D is representing a particular kind of people. Is, is representing a voice. You know, no one has ever spoken about it. And when things happen and the other side of the political divider, the one's talking, then it can be treated as just mere opposition. But when someone from within, if you are cooking and the chef himself, Anatoka Inje, I'm at the waiter, Anakuja Anasema, that look here, the food we are cooking uh, is not, uh, we are not using the right procedure. It's more impactful and it gets more sense than your competitor who is having a hotel next to you comes, comes and telling you that, look here, your soup doesn't look good. You, you simply dismiss the other person because you feel it is competition. But the fact that it's coming from David D, it's, it's for me, it's a welcome call that there are some things that we must call them out as they are. Otherwise... Um, we will really not be in good situation. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my take. And uh, I don't know, uh, do you support David this push on this? And for people who understand the idea politics and so, you can also brief us in the comment section. Tell us what this thing is all about. And yeah, so that we also get informed.